I am delighted to have Dragon Dukic with us this afternoon. I'm going to go into that in a bit more detail in a second, but just for um, purposes of this webinar, um, if you'd like to ask questions, please put them in the chat box and we have some space at the end to ask more appropriate ones. Ricardo and I will be filtering them if they're appropriate for the time we might interject uh, Dragon uh, during the presentation to ask. Um, as usual, the session will be recorded and shared. Um, and then for security reasons, um, uh, as, as previously outlined on our webinars, if you feel like your device has been taken over, please um, exit the meeting and try to come back in afterwards. Uh, and if we do have a serious breach in security, then we will abort the, the meeting, but hopefully we won't have any of those issues. So back to Dragon Dukic. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, really, really pleased we could get Dragon on to, uh, to talk with us, not just because of his uh, stature uh, in, in the game of handball on the men's and women's side, but from a personal perspective, the guy opened up so many doors for my career. So it's, uh, it's great to touch base with him again and, and reconnect after, after some time of not seeing him. So Dragon, thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to share uh, your experiences with us. Um, that's it from me. I'm going to pass over to Dragon now, who will introduce himself um, in a little bit more detail and then commence with the presentation. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you, Bob. First of all, thank you for inviting me here to be today with you and to share some experience. I will not say knowledge, I will say experience and opinion. And I will really enjoy to share with you all things what I have to mention, but I will also like to hear your voice and to, to communicate together about this problem because I, I really find that this is one of the problem what we have to solve during our our problems in handball is actually that we lose a lot of players in the period between youth categories and seniors and that's why I find this topic very interesting and I really think that we have to speak loudly about that and to to enjoy to communicate today and to speak very loudly and very open about the problem. I hope that you can see my screen now. Uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. I will share my screen and let's start with the presentation. Okay, here we are. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I will. I will not speak so much about, about myself. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just believe in the future day, because past is nice to speak about, but don't lead us to the future. And um, our job as a coach is is to help young people to become different than we are, to become the special one like like they are, and. I will try to lead the conversation from the coaching side because I really believe that there is a just one part of universe what we can change. And let's start for, from our self and let's start from the perspective of the coaches. And first chapter I, I will call the vision and that's something what every one of us bring on, on this on this beautiful sport. There is a million different sports in our planet and um, I really believe that each one of them have something special and need uh, some special requirements. You know, uh, all this picture speak a lot about other, but in handball we really have a place for everyone. For uh, We have a, in handball history lot of really different player like a uh, Forked Zebra from, Zerbe from 211 to Lubov Ranes from 166 and we have a uh, players who are not so uh, maybe athletic from perspective of other sports but there is a place in our sport because in uh, handball selection in, uh, we have a seven position and we have also some special defender because handball rules give us opportunity to involve in our sport really everyone and that's why uh, i find handball like a universal sport for everyone who want to express himself uh, in beautiful game and um, 
Uh, on the end of this story, I will speak about the project of Handball for All, but on the beginning, I will just mention that I really don't believe in this story about talented and talented nations and that or talented cities for the handball traditional etc these important words and I mentioned here two examples if you speak about french handball 25 30 years ago they they don't exist in uh, now in 21st century france is one of the most successful nations what does it mean that uh, you don't have to live this uh, this life underdog lives and you have to believe in your possibilities but especially when we speak we we have to speak about us about coaches and we are team sport and creating team is the role of the coach what is really most important because you have to create the team of all these uh, individuals and actually i have to say that we are examples we are examples of what people follow and if we believe we can lead other people with us we can if we believe in miracles what i call miracles but you can call on, on different way really for uh, depends what is your goal but this goal always determine what are you going to be and this is something what I always mention but uh, I always underline one important sentence that is that every one of us is really different and we have to follow our own way our own philosophy uh, there is a million of example in front of us and we see the difference of handball in our days but to create your own strategy and your own system doesn't matter if it's defense and attack means to follow your your own way of course uh, I have to say that man with idea can burn the fire but uh, one lonely man it's difficult to change anything but all of us together like we are today uh, collected about one topic we can do something we can do something big and uh, i have to say that uh, usually when i work with the teams i i underline this that this national team or even team is place to give not to take and always on the first side on the first page is the team and team spirit uh, what are important things important to consider that like in in real life education is something what i have to mention like a first things but education of all education of our staff education of ourselves and education of our players we have to bring them on the level that they search for the new knowledge uh, there is also one important thing that we have to promote the things what we are doing. Now in, in uh, modern life, before you, you know that before it was not easy, but now with the social network, with all these things around us, with, with all these cameras inside our phones, we can promote our sport everywhere, really everywhere. And we have to bomb the people around us with information we have to be everywhere in the school to present our matches on the web to be really to speak about things what we are doing that's also another important things and as i already said we have to dream high what does it mean uh, i will speak here from the perspective of national teams and national players like candidate for the national team for me uh, to dream high I mean to to dream to the top and uh, during this period we have these phases like his inspection tests uh, comparison analysis report all these things are just the steps in our way but all the way we need to have this line what lead us to our dreams as we said we cannot do it alone and creating the staff is one of important things and creating the staff and usually in our days uh, you can start from wherever you want but um, you have to share responsibility with the people around you and you have to find the people 
with their own philosophy and then to create one good stuff what is always created with the minimum of this assistant your right hand the goalkeeper coach like someone who take care about most important part of the game snc specialists who help us now to become better and all this kind of analysis and of course medical staff who follow us and help us to do things in the best way a famous sentence faster higher stronger for all olympians well know uh, teach us to regular work is really not enough if someone uh, want to change himself if someone want to bring him on a different stage of course need individual initiative and our team is created by individuals and if each individual is better then our team is better what about staff staff is the same part of the team and i find us like an example and uh, people will follow you if they see that you really stay behind your words and that's why i uh, really believe that us and as the coaches we are the first place where we can change something uh, second and very important part is uh, it is really important that we practice hard that we practice excellent on on the high level but if we don't have international experience if we don't uh, check our level of progress first on city or national level or international level that means nothing you know you don't know you you are in the dark and you don't know where you are in that moment um, when i call this uh, line uh, knowledge transfer um, i i keep in mind the period of ex yugoslavia a period of the best days of um, handball from where i am coming and what does it mean this is one line of the knowledge transfer when all these people work in in the same way we push on the same way what does it mean that always your assistant your right hand is someone who is working with the u21 team and then in the same moment with u19 and you have this vertical knowledge transfer what is really important and necessary then um, another thing what i call guest lecturer I, I i like when i work with my teams to have impact of another philosoph philosophy of another uh, thinking from from different handball schools and that's why i really believe that it's important that during your work you have if you are able to do of course impact of some other coaches and to show your players and your staff that you are wide enough to accept other opinion and of course to keep your own own way and i said here that every two months you can always when you have opportunity have guest or lecturer who will help you on theoretical and practical way to work different with with your team uh, we have um, webinars in our <laughs> corona days like opportunity to meet meet more often with with some people what we usually don't don't see and um, i when i mentioned that um, international experience on one side this is a competition of course and all kind of competition and on other those are the seminars you know and each one of us now on horizontal way has to be presented on the place where we discuss about topics interesting for us i don't believe in um, uh, in coaching seminar or the way that all of us speak about the same problem you know uh, someone work with the national teams and very high level someone work in the top level club someone work with the kids old 14 years and we don't have the same problem okay we are coaches from the same game but we have um, different problems in, in our work that's why i really think that we have to do this on a horizontal way even not just with the handball experts sometimes with the referees who are referring our school competition uh, with the uh, other people agent all, all these things who are on the same horizontal line in 
I will not say our level, in uh, our level of interest. And that's why I, I find that head coaches and uh, always, doesn't matter if you participate or not, if you prepare to compete on the high level, then you have to be on this events and then you have to listen to other people not just to take some knowledge just sometimes just to confirm the things what are you doing and then also on the level less on u21 u19 u17 you have to be there where is the place and you have to be well informed just to be in in a situation that you can do it with your player on the best way and uh, sorry Now we're coming on the chapter two, on, on part two. And um, I, I really think that it's important that we have to, to have idea, but it's also important to know how to bring our idea to reality and what is the pathway, what we have to pass and how to do this. And this is the long way, of course, but uh, before you start, you have to prepare something. First, before we start with, with uh, even with the other people, we have to analyze, complete the situation. We have, we need the basic things like is our goals and objective. And of course, we have to analyze our squad to see where we are compared with others and where we are compared with models. And then we can discuss. Uh, I, I really accept that uh, I expect the question from your side also about models and things, but it's important that you know a way where are you going because uh, uh, that means that you know what you really want. You, you, you don't go in there without a plan. Uh, very important things and wherever, and I didn't want to speak about myself, but in the last 21 years I'm abroad and even in my country I'm a foreign coach. And uh, yeah, I did a job in different countries with a dif different handball tradition, with different sport tradition. And first things what I try to do is to synchronize the national calendar with international calendar. That's the only way to make the things properly. You know, uh, I know that sometimes it's not easy because we are... Here we are, I saw some people from even different continents. But uh, if you want to be part of biggest event, then you have to provide time and pro provide a proper calendar that you are able to do this. And uh, another thing, even before you start uh, to establish the coaching staff, because I, I really don't believe I was a man doing all these things alone on the beginning and um, uh, learning in my own skin about all problems and everything. But in modern days, you are not able to do nothing if you are alone. And then you have to establish the stuff from the people who are interesting or have same ideas. Uh, before you start, you have to make initial tests and you have to compare your athletes with the model where you want to bring them and when i say this i will speak later when we speak about selection about motor skills and things uh, i will not say that if we have a player like a lubov ranesh and he is not by the regular models what we prepare our head that he has to be out no that's wrong but if you plan to play for example three to one defense and you don't select any wing what is able to play on the front of defense, that means it is impossible to play defense. That's why it's important that if you have some dreams, if you have some goals, that you have to collect the people who will be useful and who will feel themselves useful in that zone. And of course, forecast what to expect from the your team, from the people around you, board, uh, other coaches, managers, etc. It's very important because on that way you can you can live in reality. If you remember from ideas to reality was the name of the topic. But I mentioned selection like important part and 
I really think that we have to speak much more about selection in all our uh, seminars, webinars, however to call them, because uh, many things are impossible to do in sport if we didn't think about them in advance. And that's why subject and concept of selection is the crucial things before you start to work. Without this, there, there is no way to do that in a good way. And what are results in reality? Results are collected between good selection and good work with selected players. You can work as best as you can, but if selection is not good enough, then it's difficult to make a results what you plan. And uh, always when we speak about selection, there is one important moment, what is uh, choice and elimination. And to speak about that, uh, I will bring you a little bit on side and let you know that uh, selection has to be really with criterias. And these criterias must be clear and understandable. What does it mean? We have to be honest. In uh, it's, it's impossible to go to uh, some music school or art school or acting school if you are not talented, if you don't pass criterion. And we like to say that in our sport we have place for everyone. Yes, but then we have to also to present them criteria what they have to mention. And after I will say that uh, this is not strict that if you don't have all of them, you cannot participate in sport. No, that, that's wrong. But you, you have to fulfill something from, from these things. One of the things is really high level of motor skills. And um, if you are fast, really fast, that's welcome and enough but also if you are strong also if you have some other things and i will speak about that and then we have to uh, when we test and make a selection we have to put some stages and some goal during the, during the etape during the period and to compare them with our models once again i mentioned that that word that word uh, during the period we have some checkpoints and uh, it's important that people understand that if they don't reach sometime one of the points that they are still part of the team and uh, to be part of the team most of the time mean that you have to change your mind to be a part of the team sport and team member uh, we have to present what does it really mean it's something more than uh, summary of our individuals and uh, because most of the time our goals are big we dream high but we have to care about a relation between the players and project and sometimes uh, with our wish to reach the goals we overload a training session per week or and I, I will speak about uh, mistakes. If someone asks me, it's like inappropriate size of the ball, uh, overloaded training session, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we have to uh, to live with our expectation and our capabilities. And my work with with uh, some of the people who are today with us, I was the man pushing all of us including me and all of you every single day to become better but you know you have to uh, you have to uh, you have to be clear with with these stages because there must be time to enjoy if you go just up if you push the button up and up like a high jumper and today you jump uh, 190 and you are satisfied but for tomorrow you have two meters and you jump over two meters and then after tomorrow you want to jump to 10 to 20 and you are never satisfied that's why it's important that you uh, establish a real relation between players and project and that you always adjust your expectation and capabilities that mean that you will reach on the end of your, of your, your goals but you have just to be in reality, 
with with the daily project uh, progress and with the things what you can do of course there is always additional selection what does it mean if someone don't pass criterion in moment a maybe in the moment b maybe his progression is slower he will pass the selection and you have to open the door for additional selection usually there is a famous um, sentence what i mentioned regularly in my in my presentation it's about Sven Goran Eriksson, famous football coach. He always mentioned that, that uh, each coach has to stay three years in a project. First year is year of the selection, as, as, as we spoke. Second year, you work with them, you saw your staff, how they work, you saw your players, and then second year is year of additional selection. And then third year is year of results. If you don't have results, you have to leave, of course. But if you have results, you have to leave, <laughs> of course, because you have to establish a new project. And uh, that's, uh, that's why it's important that you keep in mind that additional selection is the chance for someone, for everyone, actually to catch the train and to be on the same road. And, of course, you or us as a coaches, we are responsible to protect the project and to protect the people inside and to protect the project also from the people inside from from ourselves as well and then continuation is something i i already mentioned is um, to be aware that there is a different philosophy different strategy different ways how you can uh, reach your goals and I mentioned here three countries with completely different uh, different plans and different strategy. It was Brazil uh, creating the national team as a team, keeping the best player together, uh, playing the league. Teams play the league without the best team and they work all the year together, they compete together and they become a team. Or for example, Korea. I don't know how much of you knows the number of uh, handball teams in Korea and how how often and how hard they practice. Uh, and I find the uh, Eurester Butzel like, like someone who can be good presenter and speak about the special Korean way and or German way. Uh, they decide to create the best league on the planet and to give opportunities to their players to play at home with world best player and then to collect the team in in the year when they won world championship in 2007 uh, Heiner Brand created a team uh, collecting national team uh, once in a mount together and keeping them together there is a different experience and different philosophy but i will say my opinion about that of course uh, to reach your goals to make your player competitive to give them some feedback you have to participate in uh, in different kind of competition i mentioned here european and world championship competition uh, why because I, I truly believe that now if you don't compete on that level with the world best player you will not be able to compete and that's why it's important for us even to have this uh, open championship in, in, in Sweden to have opportunity to play with, uh, with the best handball team, with the best player, to give to our player a chance to see where they are. But not just with the handball best players. I, I learned something during my, my trip and my life uh, uh, also from uh, UK and from uh, Swiss philosophy of the sports uh, we have to be in contact with other sports because most of them have the same same problems you know if you speak with your colleagues from the basketball or water polo or even some other individual sport you will find that they have the same problems and usually we are, uh, concentrate on our own problems and we don't see that problems are the same and then with the contacts with other people from other sports we can probably solve much easier our own problem and 
something what is usually with us that we see successful people and we just see the top of the pyramid. We don't see all problems for they pass. Every one of us has a problem and top of the pyramid is just the final product and final moment. Every one of us passed many things to come to the top. But um, as I said in the beginning, uh, lack of information or that we need to talk more about our project, whatever our projects are, it, it's reality because biggest enemy is ignorance. And what I find as a best things after we finished London Olympics that some new kids, number of kids start to play handball, that they have opportunity to see the handball with their own eye. And that's, that's something what is bigger, bigger than sport. But in part three, in chapter three, I would like to speak a little bit more or deeper about selection. And there is a man who is really well known when we speak about selection of, of, of human race. And uh, I, I truly believe that selection is this key to the success, the secret. Uh, this this secret point what we have to to find but again i will start from us from ourselves and um, about coach personality in that process and what we have to what we have to do and there is a three important question what every one of us has to answer what how and why uh, answers on question what we what we really have to do is what is our job actually is million different things we are responsible to select the players and we are responsible to improve to improve their performance we lead the process of training we test and measure and we correct mis mistakes uh, we are responsible also to lead and manage our group our small group and our team staff group and to stimulate the players in different various form and one of the very important in modern world is to coordinate to manage interpersonal relation in uh, our groups and our teams how to do this I will say just uh, two words you, you can see on the screen, but I will mention these two words, patience and consistency. Really, we are fully responsible for this and we have to take care about this, about all, all these things. And we have all the time to coming back to ask ourselves and to give the answer. And why, of course, uh, first, uh, we are someone who we example lead our group and if we are enthusiastic and motivated and confident uh, people who are behind us will be will be the same and that's why I, I really believe that coach personality in the process of the selection is the first and primary key second uh, things what I want to mention today and actually we can stay a little bit more after on, on this uh, page is what the selection is in reality. Of course, there is these four important things, morphological characteristics, level of basic motor skills, level of coordination, or let's call it this technical mastery, and this complex of psychological factors. But as you can see here that uh, success is ability plus motivation, and I will speak a little bit uh, just little about, about about that is in uh, we can present in this bigger form like uh, ability is morphological functional motor and psychological abilities then motivation and commitment to handball of course then well done selection and then high level of professional work we already mentioned but we cannot forget something what is calling living conditions or working conditions 
uh, you from UK, I don't have to mention how important is that to, and what a problem you have to reach some good conditions to, to play handball. But thanks, thanks God, our sport is uh, one sport what you can really practice everywhere. And when I speak about individual part of this, I will speak uh, about that, how we can jump over, over those problems. And in front of you, there is um, numbers what uh, show us how our game change during the years. And something what was standard for the handball players on the first Olympic game is change radically to uh, London Olympics. In 40 years, you can see that everything changed. Height of the players, average, weight, age, etc., etc. And there is one more thing what I didn't mention here is um, international experience. But what is uh, something would collect all those teams? Uh, that, that all three teams are very successful as gold medal winners in, 97, in 1972, 1984. But when we speak about this, we usually take uh, success without to, to, to measure from, from where it's coming. It's really not just ability. It is also a decision, where, what you want to be and where you want to go. And I, I present here three examples from different parts of not even just the sport, basketball, tennis, and business. And you will see the names of the people who, who are really different, not just by their abilities, it's by their decision about uh, Novak Djokovic's life and how looks his daily routine and how he changed completely the way of life. You probably know enough uh, about Michael Jordan. <laughs> These days is popular now, we know much more uh, how he practiced and what he did to, to come on the place of the basketball king. And uh, here is the things from the business, you know, um, Tim Cook from Apple routinely begins to email his employers at four o'clock in the morning. That means it's not just ability, ability it's also a decision. And in our sport, we have uh, different examples. Uh, I mentioned, I will present this picture. There is also another picture from the youth sport and who is successful, less or, or more. But you will see from the uh, last four competition here that we have different names of successful nation. World champion, European champion, world champion, European champion, different nation. And also in the final, we have a, uh, now we have uh, Spain and Croatia, and then we have Norway, Sweden, different type and different strategy and different philosophy of handball. And uh, I, I really believe that all this nation have something important what, what you can use, but uh, on the end, you have to find your own way to success. You have to find your own pathway, what you can follow with, with your players. And um, then we're coming to the chapter one. It's a short story about the project called it the Handball for All. Actually, uh, Handball for All is the project what is based on individuals. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, let's see, COVID will allow us to make this edition X this year, or we, we have to prolong for the 2021. Actually, we start in 2011 in Serbia and the project was created by four uh, coaches from four different European countries and planned to move over the country. Is to collect the handball people from really all, all over the world. Um, handball for All is the project based to individuals on the way that also, we as a coaches, we make one crucial mistake when we work with our young player. We concern of our player until they are part of some uh, competitive teams. What does it mean? Uh, in all our countries, we take care about our 
uh, female or male, U16, U18, U20. And then it's their responsibility to become good seniors or to leave our sport. But in reality, it's not like that. And we have to provide something to bring the people. And problem, we find the problem is there, that we lose the player between U19 and U21, and even more between U19 seniors. Except you know, lady national player, they have a, a university handball, and then they have professional handball. What is really interesting, what does it mean when you uh, finish your university, you are a professional player, or you have to leave the handball. But what we can do to keep the player, to keep our sport, because it's not just um, a players, someone who build this sport. We need the coaches, we need analysts, we need the referees, we need the presidents, we need board members. We need a lot of these kids to stay in our sport. And that's why uh, we were thinking how to resolve the problem. Exactly this problem is topical today presentations. Uh, we create a project what will work on individual way with a player old, older than U18, that means that they are able to travel, what will connect the people from all over the world. And actually in the last 10 years, we have a candidate from USA to Japan and from Scandinavia to Iran, a very different uh, handball philosophy and different people, of course, uh, to work with 18 to 20 players in total. Uh, and I have to say what is different with, with this project than with the uh, million of uh, summer academies or academies all over the world. This is not the mass product. This is the product uh, would uh, collect uh, 18 to 20 players, not more. That means three by position and 10 to 12 coaches. In the first year when we start, we prepared the project and we were thinking that it's important that we bring the players and to help the players. But then we recognized we have a request actually from France, from one young uh, Portuguese coach uh, who was assistant coach in Toulouse, Joel da Silva, now is very famous French coach. And he wanted to come to see how we educate young players because uh, he has opportunity to work in his team with Daniel and Jelkovic, uh, ex-national player of Serbian national team and now assistant coach in Toulouse with his perfect uh, technical skills and ability. And then we ask ourselves, if we change just the player, then we change nothing. We have to change both sides. We have to change the coaches. We have to change the philosophy of the people who work with the young players. Because if we change just one generation, we will change nothing. And then we decide to have 18 to 20 coaches, uh, players and 10 to 12 coaches. In total, it's a small group of 30 people who collect on one place and work with uh, us from the staff. And actually, staff is uh, huge. There is uh, 10 specialists uh, what collect uh, SNC specialists, as you can see some of those people, goalkeeper specialists, some of the European top best coaches and then people from uh, IHF lectors and EHF lectors, what is really important. And then we also have uh, some of the players, world top players, who pass all the problems because it's important that they touch uh, uh, successful people from who are the stars for them with the same problems during their uh, during their career. Everything happened in uh, seven days on English language uh, with the daily routine that we have a morning, S uh, SNC morning, morning with SNC coach. Uh, we try to give them a lesson about the proper sport life, to test them, to give them a task, what they can do, what they can improve uh, in SNC things. Then we have a uh, to training in the sports hall, that's morning and afternoon practice, where we have a different topic, but we also work, because I will remind you that we have three to four players 
by position that we work individually. And I really believe that we already in our sport, uh, you remember when I spoke about overload, we, we touch the maximum of uh, collective trainings per day. And, um, you know, I, I'm one of the people who really like to work with, with my players and we work eight to ten time or even ten to twelve time per week. But then um, coming the question, how many of those training has to be collective? And now, if you ask me, I really believe that afternoon practice in your clubs has to be collective and the morning practice has to be separated in the group that you have to work uh, with one player on their strength and condition, with another, with their technique, with the third one, you have to work theoretically or the endurance and different kind. That uh, morning training has to be uh, concerned and to take care about individuals. And here you, on the left side, you see the plan of, of activities. As I told you, SNC morning, two trainings in the hall with, uh, with working by position. <clears throat> Pardon. And evening would uh, connect all of us with some topic, some sport topic and theoretical lesson. For edition 10, <laughs> we plan to have a separate uh, uh, lessons for the players and for the coaches just to come even more deeply inside individually. On the end, uh, as you can see from the right side, uh, every one of them received uh, some certificate, but it's not just about certificate, it's also to receive uh, some things what he has to change during, uh, during the year. Because in seven days you cannot change the people, but probably you can touch the mind. Reports are very important uh, about. And then uh, uh, there is one important thing, what I have to, to be honest, is that everyone who coming there, and we have Zoran, we have Mark, we have people who participate there, is able to make any question during, uh, uh, during 24 seven. Actually, how looks the trainings? Before we start, we present the topic, actually present topic in advance, but we present in details what will happen. And then during our work, we explain to the coaches when, how, why. And on the end, we have discussion. We have open discussion with the coaches and they are free to explore how they work in, in their clubs and what is different or what is the same and how they see reality. And also during all day and even after our theoretical session, they are able to express themselves and to make the question. Uh, everything what happened during the year between academies for me is even more important because uh, this contact and something what we just have in during this presentation and now I hope because I have to leave uh, some space for your question is to have this open channel for communication between us as a colleagues, between us in our staff, and also between all of us and our players. They have to be really to feel free to make any questions and to, to enjoy on, on, that, on that path to, to the stars. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dragon. Really, really good presentation. Uh, Ricardo, I don't think we had many questions so far in the, in the group. You're on mute, mate. No, we just had one uh, around the overload factor in the sessions, yeah. but I think you've touched it. Um, Dragon uh, and, and Sven has just said uh, the question to consider the question answered. So thank you, Sven. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I love your backgrounds, by the way. They're always very interesting. Um, uh, if anyone has any other questions, if you want to, instead of write it, if you want to just unmute yourselves and make a live question, just please do. Um, Bobby, I don't know if you have any yeah. on your... Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll start uh, with one, Dragon, uh, and it's coming yeah. back to maybe, I think it's one of the first slides that you, you spoke about, and it was... Um, really important that as, as leaders and coaches that we don't try to um, create new versions of ourselves, that we're trying to give the, the, the young people the ability to grow into the, the people that they are. 
Can you give us some examples of how you would facilitate that in, in groups? Um, any good examples of players you've worked with over the years? Okay. Uh... I didn't want to use some of the videos because I'm uh, expecting uh, some of the faces in front of me. Uh, but I, I will show just uh, one simple example. That was, uh, okay, let's, let's forget these names here. But you can see how we progress in a year with uh, some clear target in front of us. Uh, that was your test, uh, some test. I hope that you can see the screen. You can see the screen. We can see. Oh, just, you need to uh, just the um, the slide with the mascots from London, the, from the London Olympics. No. So you're going to have to stop sharing this one and then press share screen again and select what you want to share. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Here is a good example and answer for your question. I didn't want to. To use the videos but here you can see we have a test in January 2010 testing out with our SNC specialist Joris Terbutzel uh, abdomen with the 60 second 10 kilos plate and this is the number of repetition what we did and uh, in that moment we have a models one of the models was Italian national team you know that we scratched them year after even they were Front of, in front of us, and then Slovenia national team, world class team, and that was the numbers like our role model where we want to be. And you will see, uh, John, you can see yourself how you progress in a year, and that means uh, Bob that everything is possible. Really, that we we can. If you have enough big dream, if you know where you want to be, you can put yourself in the, in, in the place where you want to be. Us as a coaches and players uh, and well. I will uh, show one more, uh, one more important. Okay, let me do this. I hope that you will see this. I have to stop sharing again, probably. Yeah, yeah, and then start sharing. Select what you want to share. Okay. Give me just a second. Uh, hope that you can see it. Yep. When we speak about basic motor skills, okay, here is uh, another another people i hope that you can see everything what i call basic motor skills and then uh, you can find that some of those like on the beginning when, on the beginning i said that some of those things are not in the best way you can see that this israeli team was um, uh, in uh, 2015 on the place of uh, Yugoslavia national team from Olympic Games in 1972. That means that average height and weight, if you remember the numbers from the slide, was um, 184 and 87. But then that implicate reaction from the coaching side. Then uh, you have to choose a different strategy. You have to choose a different uh, type of defense. You have to use your players on the best way and um, if you are not strong enough then you will be fast enough that's why i really believe that uh, if you want to make a good team one of those basic motor skills has to be on the high level you cannot uh, have any progress if all of them are average that's why selection is uh, we're using selection to search to find this resource in, in our own team and uh, I hope Bob that I answer you that commitment is something what is uh, maybe crucial things if you want to make results what uh, what is your own dream you know for, for ourselves we have a different different dreams and 
we work with the different teams, but always we try to reach the maximum with our teams. Yeah, I suppose it's, de it's, it's, it's definitely an individual kind of uh, concept in terms of where players want to want to move to and how they and how they want to yeah where they want to progress to. Uh, Ricardo, anything else in the in the chat? Yeah, I got a couple uh, a couple more. Uh, one of them relating to the to when the, when a player is moving from an under 21s team to a senior age group in a high level environment, um, and looking at the, the experiences you've had on that. Um, moment, what do you consider are the biggest challenge for them? Is it the physical side or the psychological switch they have to have when, when moving there? Uh, that's the good question and <laughs> again I will uh, return to the coach's side and I think that uh, we are not brave enough like in the past that if, uh, if you check uh, best uh, handball teams on in our days, you will find a lot of players and you cannot imagine the teams without players over 35 and something. What is for me the signal that we don't believe enough in young people, that is easier, actually we all coaches, we are under, under pressure and we have to provide the best results and that's why it is easier to give the chance to older players, players with experience, players with the name, and not to use young players. And uh, I will mention this sentence that no one become player, but even coach, without support. And that's why it's important that we as a coaches support uh, young players to give them a chance on time and they will give us back. Uh, some of the best example from the world of handball is you know, uh, I'm sure that uh, French national team have also good players in time when they offer opportunity uh, to Nikola Karabatic to play in the national team with 18 years, like 18 years old boy. And probably he was physically ready, but definitely he was not mentally ready to be the guy. But then, uh, smart coaches and players around him help him and that's why I, I really believe that our game becomes physical in the last 20 years that um, more the technical mastery is, is important some physical ability but still we have a 16 player and we have opportunity to keep these young people and to give them opportunity to give them chance and uh, I, I really blame us myself and my colleague that we don't believe more in young players but also in young coaches because on uh, you know that uh, i have this somewhere i was uh, writing some article for serbian uh, uh, serbian federation uh, serbian coaches organization and that uh, most of the coaches are over 45 in the last euro and uh, I, I really don't know to answer you why it's like that. Why we don't believe more in young people? Because uh, this game, and I will try to, to finish my answer with this, this game can change just new energy and new people and uh, players and coaches with new ideas. In my opinion, our game is stuck. And in this moment, don't progress, especially don't progress in the place where we want to be. In the last 10 years, we didn't progress in countries like UK, Italy and Turkey, countries with 200 million of people, European people who like sport, who has money to invest in sport. And I really, is, is that because we keep our position and we don't believe enough to the young people. We as a coaches, we have to give opportunity to young players and to support them. And that's only only one way if we want to change reality. Okay, thank, thank you, got, Ricardo. I've got one uh, for ah, Dragon before you go to that one. Um, some some really interesting stuff there, dragging around coaches not having that belief in in the players and the support not being there. Um, from a personal perspective, can you draw on any um, examples of maybe a um, a situation that you would have done differently, you know, maybe a mistake that you made in the in the past. You don't have to give specific examples of the team or the player, but um, something that might help the coaches not to repeat that mistake. You know, we have this opportunity to tap into your experience. So, um, yeah, can you share anything with us? 
Okay, I, I will mention the names because I think this is not fair enough. But uh, as a Swiss national coach, uh, I took uh, the team after one of the legendary coach. And after, just uh, after they finish the uh, European Championship, and then I have to change. Uh, 13 players decide to, to quit. And I have a completely new team with me. And then uh, our first big action, big tournament was the tournament in Czech, Czech Republic. We were invited there with uh, three really good teams like uh, Russia, Serbia and Czech Republic. And then we went on the tournament with the team to present this new squad. And the uh, evening before we uh, have a small meeting and I told them, okay, I understand that, okay, now we are with, with other teams and you have, uh, maybe some of you have uh, friends uh, here, but please stay in hotel tonight because we have to be ready for tomorrow. That was TV match against Czech, Czech Republic, against home team, uh, opening match for the new arena, etc., etc. And I, I really wanted that we present. But after dinner, you know, sometime your eyes see what you don't have to see. I saw four players leaving hotel. And uh, you know that usually it is the oldest player player who play with one of the legend, uh, legendary player of Czech national team, now he's national coach. And actually that was two goalkeepers, first and second, and two blessed players. <laughs> Four of them left hotel. I, I recognized that and then I, I regularly don't check the rooms, but then I left seeing other players making massage, etc., etc. And I make a decision. And tomorrow, at two o'clock, after the lunch, we have a brief meeting about the team and things. And um, I cannot see the faces of my staff because I didn't inform no one what will happen. Then I inform the team in front of them. First I ask, does someone leave hotel last night? They raise the hand. That was a good signal because we have open relation and then I say I will not uh, make a drama but you will not play today you will be with us there because you know if team going uh, out without four players who are crucial players and they are not even in the team and TV transmission TV broadcasting game you will be there but you will not play uh, we have on that game uh, German referees top referees and uh, I put the goalkeeper who was never, ever national player. He was a, from junior national team. Only one goalkeeper in that moment, third one. And the rest of the team to play. And uh, I risk what I want to tell you. That is nothing in, in our life for free. I risk on the half time we lead by nine goals. On the end, we won Czech Republic by 12 goals. And uh, that was a hard message for, for my players, my best players. Of course, they play second and third game. Of course, I didn't take this like uh, something big. Actually, they came back on time, etc., etc. But they broke some rules and I want to show them that team is always on the first page. And uh, I can give you also a different example. When team asked me, to do something to break the rules and I did it and I, I really believe that uh, uh, there is team is stronger than any individual and that we have to believe that young people with hunger with with wish to change something as sometime even better than this old and experienced uh, people and sometimes we have to find uh, another way how we can do it and just believe in yourself just believe in things what they're doing and of course before you have to prepare another opportunity I, I i will not mention that old players or experienced players are different of course they are not i will give you 100 examples of sacrifice but uh, yeah, we really have to believe and if you believe that we come back on positive side
Great, thanks, Dragon. Um, Ricardo, yeah. anything else? Um, just uh, the last one. Yeah, just the last one. Uh, uh, instead of me doing it, I'm going to let him do it himself. Uh, so I'm going to unmute bit Bill. I think you can speak now uh, and uh, crack on with it. Uh, Dragon, I just want to know how it made you feel to take uh, such a young goalkeeper as Bobby White when he was nowhere to be in a country goalkeeper. How did that make you feel? <laughs> First, you know, uh, to speak about um, those special people who stay with us to the end, Bill, mean to. This is the big story about commitment and about uh, uh, the story from the beginning, Dream High. Because uh, Bob White decided to be uh, Olympians in the moment when he decided to go to Greece. In, in some country, in some small island, to be professional player there, and that was a really hard decision. Uh, to reach your goal, uh, take to sacrifice something from you, from every one of us. It's not easy job, and I never promise during my presentation and uh, during my work with the players that something will be easy. Uh, you know, that, that's your job and that's your path and you have to sacrifice. But on the end, uh, if you give everything, then you have nothing to lose. That's something, with, if you empty your packet, then you, uh, you, you gave everything. That, that, that's something what, uh, what I really like to say. And uh, I, I never feel empty even after hard defeat when I know that we gave everything in our practice, in our things. And there is one uh, famous story of Professor Branislav Pokajac. Uh, they prepared, you, you know, in past they have much more time. That's my answer a little bit to your question, uh, Bob, previous question. They have much more time to work together. And then in one moment, you know, that was handball over their hand and all players want, wanted to stop. And then Professor Pokajac told them in preparation for 1984, then he told them, okay, we have a right to stop today. But don't ask yourself all your life, if I didn't stop that day, maybe I will reach my goals. That means we all, we have to, to do our best on every single training, on every single game. And we have to feel in peace with our ambition, with things what we gave. And then uh, results coming. Results are also defeats and big victories. Life is a mix of, of all. Uh, thanks for that question, Bill. And, and Dragon, uh, thanks for the, for the answer. Um, you've got a great way of, uh, of sharing the stories and, and um, you know, giving these analogies. And I can certainly connect with the empty pockets um, metaphor that you gave a minute ago because it might have been empty ever since I went to Greece. So thanks for that. Um, <laughs> as that brings us to the end of, of the presentation uh, from Dragon. So um, first of all, Dragon, thanks again for taking the time uh, this afternoon to spend with us. Um, it's, been, it's been really great uh, to hear your, uh, to, for you to share your experiences with us. Um, I'm really delighted to say that we've got uh, next week, next Friday, two o'clock, we have uh, Roland Freitas who's going to be sharing uh, some uh, examples of uh, transition and fast breaks with us. Rolando, do you want to unmute yourself and say hello to everybody and maybe to Dragon too? Hi Dragon, hi everyone. Uh, hi. It'll be a pleasure to come inside uh, next Friday and to join all of you. It was uh, very good stuff, uh, Dragon, as always. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Roland. Everybody go. Um, Dragon, I'll leave it uh, over to you to just give any last comments that you want to make before, uh, before we end the meeting. No, keep your own way, believe in yourself, do the things, make mistakes, mistakes are part of the life, but dream high. Dragon, thank you so much and thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, the recording will be sent out uh, as usual and uh, yeah, have a nice weekend. Take it easy and stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.